Welcome to the Vibrant Health Podcast with your hosts, Lydia Shatney and Jessica Espinoza. Lydia is a nutritional therapist and founder of Divine Health from the Inside Out. Jessica is a real food wellness educator and founder of the website, deliciousobsessions.com. Since this is a health-related podcast, it should be noted that the hosts are not licensed medical professionals. The information and advice provided in this podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, or prescribe for any illness or health issue and should not be construed as medical advice. And now, here are the hosts of Vibrant Health Podcast, Lydia Shatney and Jessica Espinoza. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number five of the Vibrant Health Podcast. I am Jessica Espinoza, and I am here with my co-host, Lydia Shatney. And we actually have a special guest today. Um, Mary Lapp is here. She is the owner um, and founder of the site Simple and Mary, and she's also a nutritional therapist. So we're excited to have her join us today, and this episode is going to be all about essential oils. So we're going to talk about essential oils and how each one of us use them. Um, essential oils are really playing um, a pretty integral um, part of my healing journey, and so I'm getting more and more into them, and I know that a lot of other people have a lot of interest in essential oils. So we're going to talk about kind of how we're using them, um, why they're a great addition to your wellness toolkit, and kind of all of that good stuff. So Lydia, go ahead and say hello. Hey there, everyone. It's Lydia. So glad to be back today to share more awesome information with you, and I'm super excited about our guest we have today, Mary. I met Mary virtually. Uh, She's a fellow nutritional therapist practitioner, and we kind of run in a lot of the same circles and have a lot of the same passions, and so we've chatted quite a bit, and I felt like she would be an amazing resource to tap into because she has a really uh, deep wealth of knowledge about essential oils, and so we brought her on today to to dig in our heels a bit more about this amazing resource, essential oils, and how it can really benefit you. And so, welcome, Mary. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'll just say a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Nantucket Island in Massachusetts, but I now live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania uh, with my husband. And I originally was a pastry chef, so I was all about the sugar and the baked goods and the flour and it led to some health problems for me. And so through those health problems, I kind of redirected into the nutrition and healthy lifestyle uh, field. And I've been learning ever since. I just keep on taking classes. I can't stop. So <laughs> I am, essential oils are my um, newest passion because I really um, find they work. and. They're a really pleasant way to find healing, so I'm having so much fun with them. That's awesome. Yeah, I think um, people are really starting to move in a direction of wanting to take their own health into their own hands rather than, you know, relying on our doctors and our Western medical system um, to, you know, treat our condition. So I think every person kind of reaches that point where they they have maybe kind of a healing crisis or they have a realization of like, "Uh uh-oh, I need to change some things in my life, you know, diet and all of that kind of stuff. Maybe they were hit with some kind of disease diagnosis or something like that. And um, I think essential oils really can play a pretty pronounced role in um, in just helping everybody's wellness from, you know, just aromatherapy for stress relief to, you know, kind of more serious um, conditions. So I'm excited to have you on the show as well to talk about it. So um, I guess I can give a little overview kind of of how I'm using essential oils. I still am relatively new to the essential oil world um, as far as using essential oils um, for the health benefits of it. Um, I've used essential oils for uh, like do-it-yourself skincare. I've made my own, you know, deodorant and lotion and, you know, facial scrubs and all that stuff for years, and I've, you know, always used essential oils kind of as scents for that kind of thing, but I've never really looked into the, um, like, the health benefits of aromatherapy and using essential oils until about, I guess maybe about two years ago is when I started to kind of get into it, but it's really been in the last year that I have made it kind of a forefront of my own healing journey, so I'm still a total newbie and still learning new stuff every single day, and I 
um, you know, take a very cautious, safe approach with how I use my oils, but um, I still am just amazed at the power that they have. And I think it's a great thing for people to add into their wellness toolkit um, and, and just you take advantage of this amazing gift that we have. So um, that's kind of a little overview about how I've been using them. Um, they just every day I use them more and more, um, and I find new ways that they help me. So I loaded myself up with some uh, stress stress away the stress relief blend this morning. I had kind of a rough morning, so I felt like I needed to dump the whole bottle on my head. But <laughs> a drop, <laughs> one or two drops works really well, and I've got some stuff diffusing too to kind of help keep my stress levels down. So um, so they yeah, I definitely use them every day, and I just am amazed at their power. So totally. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm still amazed and awed as well, and I really have probably dipped my toes in way long ago with oils, but maybe just in the last year or two, even more more for just my health versus you know like skincare products or you know the common thing like tea tree or somebody would use lavender. You know, it seems like those would be maybe more well-known oils and maybe more people would understand their purpose. But now I'm kind of diving in more and using them every day. Like Jessica said, I think I have my diffuser running like every day. <laughs> and that's one of, the, one of the beauties of working at home is you get to start up your diffuser, depend on whatever mood you're in. And, you know, if you're in a bad mood, you can put something in there to cheer you up. If you're tired, you can put something in there to perk you up. If you're stressed, you know. So I really love my diffuser and diffusing oils for that alone. I mean, there's so much more we can do and so much more I do do. But uh, just diffusing is great. So I hope that we can answer some more questions to people who are really just not um, – don't have much in information yet about how to use essential oils and uh, get addicted to them like we are. I kind of have this new, like I'm I'm not like the typical woman who has like 100 pair of shoes. I have 100 bottles of essential oil <laughs> instead. <laughs> so Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I'm definitely more into essential oils than shoes. <laughs> um, how I use oils, you know, I think with small children, you need to be a little bit more careful with dilution and things like that. But as an adult, I just kind of, what, depending on what I need, I, I kind of look in books and see whether it's emotional support or, or digestive support or anything like that. And I just take a, cup, a drop or two and a spurt of oil and rub it as wherever seems most appropriate whether it's my belly, which then I can just kind of sink into your organs, or the bottom of my feet where there's a lot of um, just different reflex points, or your spine where there's a lot of nerve ending, or just depending on where it makes sense, um, if there's a particular spot, like if you have sore joints somewhere, putting it on that spot. But I just kind of go with the flow and use the oil that makes the most sense and do a squirt in a drop, a squirt of carrier oil and a drop of essential oil and rub away. And it really is so helpful. I, I find it to be something that's enjoyable and helpful. I agree. Um, I think just the aromatherapy benefits of essential oils alone, um, like Lydia was saying about diffusing, I think that really is more powerful than people give them credit for. I mean, the power of smell and scent and... Um, it just really can have pretty profound effects on your brain function and things like that. So, I mean, if you're completely new to essential oils and you kind of don't know where to start, you don't have to do anything crazy. I mean, if you're, if you're out there online and you're looking around, you're going to see a lot of really crazy stuff about essential oils. And that's, you know, the three of us all take a very safe approach to how you use them. I mean, we're not going to be giving you wild health claims. We're not going to be telling you to you know, consume internally a bunch of oils every single day. That's just not how we approach them. And I feel like for those who are just getting started, just using oils for their aromatherapy benefits and diffusing them or maybe putting a little bit on um, a cotton ball and keeping it on your desk, those kind of things can be really powerful uh, more than you really would think. So you don't have to go crazy and you don't have to 
know about reflex points and, you know, where all your nerve endings and, you know, how to apply it to the body, you could really just get started using it in a diffuser. Uh, right. And then as your confidence grows, you can, you know, start exploring other options. That's kind of how I started, too. I mean, I just started getting some a couple bottles here and there, and I just started smelling them right out of the bottle. And then I eventually got an, a diffuser, and then I got another diffuser. <laughs> So, and then I started learning a little bit more about how to apply them to different areas of the body. And I'm still learning, um, you know, proper application techniques and where the best areas are to apply them. So I'm definitely not an expert in any way. But um, I'm, I'm like Mary. I kind of, I have some reference guides. And if I, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if there's an oil that could help this or I don't know how to use this oil. I just flip open my reference guides and I read about it and then I kind of make up the decision on how I think is best for me, for my own personal healing journey. So um, I'm sure you guys are probably kind of similar in the way you think about things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, for a lot of people, getting healthy seems overwhelming and, and sometimes just starting with essential oils is actually a good place for many people because you can use them to support your health in so many ways, you know. So for right now, <clears throat> a couple of people I've been working with, you know, I work with clients, so sometimes I can recommend some things to them. Uh, but even for people who are not my clients who like to learn from me, you know, they may learn some things about essential oils and get started with them. And usually the diffuser is the safest place to start because they don't really know what else to do quite yet. They don't really know how to, to use them. So getting started with a diffuser is amazing and will make you fall in love right there, you know. Uh, especially, you know, they can help support, you know, germs and maybe uh, people are having a lot of seasonal allergies right now. It can be really supportive for these kinds of things. And so pretty much anyone can benefit from just diffusing, you know. So I would love to hear more from you, Mary, on kind of, you know, your uh, maybe an introduction to how to use oils and, and some of the benefits and uses. Okay, that's great. Um, so essentially, <laughs> uh, essential oils are what plants make as they're adapting to stress, whether that's too hot or too cold or too dry or too wet or anything that the plant's dealing with. Um, pests or things like that. Um, and because we have shared chemistry, like everything has some shared chemistry, but we have shared chemistry with plants. And so those oils can help us adapt to stress also. And because the oil is fat soluble um, and our skin and our cellular membranes are fatty, so when we rub it on our skin, it can just enter into our bloodstream that way. Um, and because it's the scent part of the plant, it evaporates very easily. And it evaporates in pretty large molecules. So when you breathe it in, it gets into your bloodstream along with the oxygen that you're breathing. So that's where the inhaled oils, it can get into your bloodstream really well that way. But the cool part that I just love is how our olfactory system is connected to the limbic part of our brain. And I'm sure all of us know that if we smell something from our childhood, we're right back to where we were. Like I used to, I told you I was a pastry chef, I used to work at a bagel shop, and I smell <laughs> a garlic bagel, and I think, like, I see the sun rising, and I was 15 years old, and I'm riding my bike into the, you know, the bagel shop. Um, so we have this connection between memory um, and emotions and scent. So the oils can be extremely healing in a way that um, a lot of other things can't um, because it can just, it can stabilize your mood and it can uplift your spirit. And, and on the other side of that, if you have a negative memory associated with an oil, it might not be as beneficial for you emotionally as another oil. So this is where um, you need to just kind of small things and see how they go and see what you're attracted to and, and kind of go with that. But I love diffusing for productivity. I find I'm so much more productive and just generally happy when I have my favorite oils um, diffusing. So maybe we should all talk about our favorite oils to diffuse and which ones those are. Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, that's good. Um, it's, I like that you brought up the point of 
um, kind of experimenting and see what you're drawn to. Um, I think I've told both of you this, but I absolutely detest anything rose-scented. I can't stand rose. I, if it's in any kind of skincare product or even if it's in a blend and it has rose in it, even if it's just very, very faint, I just cannot stand the smell of it. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if that's a, like a health thing or a mental thing or whatever, but um, you know, I, so I know like after, you know, smelling one bottle of rose essential oil many years ago, and I've tried over the last two years to, you know, I'll open up a bottle and, um, and smell it to see if things have changed and it hasn't. So, um, you really do have to kind of experiment because some scents are going to be more attractive to you than others and everybody's going to be different. And there's no right or wrong, like, you know, so I don't like rose, I'm not really all that upset about it because there's lots of other options out there for me. I don't have to like rose oil. So, um, so yeah, you just really like, just experiment with different scents and see what resonates with you. Um, and the power of scent is huge. That's why I think the diffusing is um, definitely a great place to get started. Um, and you can do a lot of, we won't go into a ton of it in this episode, but you really can do a lot of pretty powerful emotional healing with essential oils because of that, um, that power of scent and, and stuff like that. So it really is pretty fascinating. We're just very, very barely scratching the surface of the basis of essential oils, but if you really start researching it and getting into it, you'll be absolutely fascinated by everything that, I mean, just the power of them is pretty incredible. So um, I guess uh, I can talk a little bit about my favorite oils. So I am really drawn to citrus oils. I love everything citrus. Um, I, I don't know necessarily why that is. I actually was talking to a different NTP, and um, what's funny is that um, Whenever I get a headache, I will smell lemon essential oil, and that really soothes that headache for me. And I was talking to um, our friend, we all know Jennifer um, from 20-something Allergies, and I was talking to her about it one time, and she thought that was really interesting um, that lemon oil kind of helps get rid of my headaches when I have them, and we wondered if there was some correlation between liver function, um, you know, citrus is very supporting to the liver, and, um, and the headaches being um, maybe liver congestion cost. So that was that was really interesting. I haven't done a ton of research into it, but um, I feel very drawn to those citrus scents. Um, and I probably use, um, I like to diffuse the citrus oils, that bright and just fresh scent just always makes me feel really good. Um, and then, so citrus, lavender is probably one of my main go-tos. I mean, it's so versatile. You can use lavender for everything, you know, skincare and um, aromatherapy and all that stuff. So I use lavender quite a bit. Um, I use peppermint essential oil quite a bit as well. Um, the brightness, that really helps with just brain. You know, I can just sniff some peppermint oil and it kind of like stimulates my brain and I feel more alert. So I'd really say the citrus oils, um, lavender and peppermint are probably the ones that I use the most. Um, but I do use things like, you know, tea tree oil and, um, you know, the thieves blend and cedar wood and stuff for other things, but um, maybe not as much as I use the, the citrus and peppermint and lavender. So, so that's kind of a little overview. I have, I just recently purchased a whole bunch of oils. Like Lydia said, I, I really would rather purchase essential oils or real food than buy shoes. So... <laughs> So I have a big box of oils that I got not too long ago, and um, I'm just kind of working my way through them. I'm opening up the bottle, and I'm looking through my reference guide. I'm reading about the oil as I open it, and I smell it, and I kind of, like I'm spending a little bit of time with each oil to kind of see how I feel about it. So it's kind of a fun experience once you get into it to really just see what resonates with you and what's going to be beneficial for you as you heal. So It's addicting. <laughs> Yeah, you just said, like, all my favorites, so um, I will say, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, most people f kind of feel great with the citrus oils. Uh, maybe they are prone to one more than the other, but I actually love grapefruit a lot. I don't, I don't know what it is about the grapefruit, but um, I really enjoy that one a lot. Of course, I love lemon. I love, the, you know, any citrus, but grapefruit seems to be one of my favorites. Um I like to do lime and clove sometimes for, uh, you know, a digestive support. 
And um, so I'll try not to use the ones Jessica did because those are the common ones <laughs> I think everyone likes. But uh, I do really, I've started to like some, and it's funny because when I first got my oils, I was trying them out, and, and some of the blends, I was just like, ugh, I hate this, it's horrible, and I just was totally not into them, but once I read about them and what they could benefit, I thought, oh, I'll try it again, and, you know, and, and I kind of wrapped my mind around, okay, maybe I, maybe I should give this another shot, and I didn't mind it so much. So some of the oils I've learned to like, I didn't like them, at, you know, at first, sniff. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now I'm like, okay, let me give it a second shot, you know. So give your oils, you know, a fair chance. Uh, if you're hearing about them and you've never smelled them and everyone's, you know, telling you how great they are, you know, get a small bottle or ask someone for a sample and, and give it a shot. But uh, I, I also really now like cedarwood. I've kind of become a little addicted to it. Uh, cedarwood is, is, is a cool oil. I never would have thought of it. But uh, I'm using it as a kind of like a relaxation and sleep support. And uh, another one I just started is vetiver, which is very woodsy and earthy and interesting. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's always fun to try these new things um, and, and see how you feel about them for sure. Mm -hmm. And I, re I remember, Mary, I, I think you posted one time, a picture and you were using valor and tangerine maybe was it and you said I diffused this today and it made me happy and I was like well happy is good I'm gonna try it and I and it was it was a great blend oh, good yeah I like to have fun with my uh, diffusing but I'm with you Jessica I'm not crazy about the really strong floral scents like rose either Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind them if they're extremely diluted, but I can't even diffuse them because it's just too strong in the diffuser. I love citrus also. So we're all three on the same page there. <laughs> um, but I do, like bergamot and lime is my favorite combination. It's very gentle, and it's just very um, emotionally balancing. It's good, it's good if you need to be picked up. Both of those oils are really good for emotional balancing. And... I would say I, I probably went on one I prefer the lime over the bergamot, but there's something about the bergamot that really helps. And bergamot's an Earl Grey tea, in case anyone isn't sure what bergamot is. Mm -hmm. It's a citrus. Um, but I also love, like, a lemon lavender. I feel like citrus belongs in every combination. <laughs> you know, I agree. It's so, so nice. Um, and an orange and cardamom can be really good. That's nice. I love grapefruit. Like you said, Lydia, grapefruit is awesome. Um, but I just, I look in my, I've got a whole drawer full of oils, and I look at them and I say, ooh, what looks good today? And it's kind of a way of spoiling yourself while helping yourself feel better at the same time and being more productive, so it's kind of a win-win all around. Um, but I just love, love just using something. On the days that I am too lazy and don't get to it, it's you know, I just don't feel as good, and I think, why didn't I just do it? <laughs> um, but I do most days for sure. So. That's awesome. Yeah, you actually just jotted down the um, bergamot and lime and the orange and cardamom. I'm going to have to try that um, <laughs> next time I do an order of oil. So, yeah, I jotted down some of those. Um, and I actually have a bottle of the vetiver that I have not um, experimented with, so I'll be looking at that one in the near future. So it's funny how, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I have a recommendation for vetiver. And it's very, very grounding. It's great before sleep. But one time I was just having a really, really stressful kind of day that I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to hurt myself if I don't stop and just cool it for a little bit, you know. And I decided to take care of myself and have a bath with vetiver and lavender and Epsom salt so that helps it um, dis dis disperse. And I know we don't always have time for that, but I happen to. I happen to. So I just stopped and I took a bath with that. And I tell you what, it changed my day. It was so relaxing and so grounding. And then I got up and I got my stuff done. And it was great. So that's, that's something you can do. Vetiver is great before bed along with the cedar wood. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
That's how I've been using it. A, a vetiver, cedarwood, and lavender combo has mm -hmm. been has been awesome. Yeah, sometimes I'll diffuse it, but usually I just mix it in a blend I have and actually just put it on my feet before bed. Um, yeah, that's good. I like to give myself, it's like I get a little foot pampering, <laughs> and uh, and then I get that relax, relaxation too. So, um, Okay, so this information has all been fantastic so far. Um, it's really exciting to see what you guys are using, and I've you know jotted down some different combinations that I'm going to try out. Um, I've got the vetiver, lavender, and cedar wood. Actually, I've got all of that here, so I may give myself a nuts and salt bath tonight and try that combo. <laughs> See if I can sleep better tonight than I did last night. So um, I know that the three of us, we all have a lot of mothers um, as readers and as listeners on this podcast, so let's talk a little bit about how to use um, essential oils with kids. I know, Mary, you briefly touched on that, and you really do have to be more cautious with um, using essential oils in kids, and I think that um, that would be a, a great thing for us to talk about so that, you know, moms can feel a little bit more empowered about using essential oils in their house with their whole family. So let's right. dive into that a little bit. Okay. I, I think I'm the only mother here. <laughs> So, yeah, I, sure. I mean, I can speak to it from a, a mom perspective, and honestly, I, I really am so thankful for essential oils for kids because one of the things with children is, you know, you're always going to run into something, you know, whether they're getting sick or they have a tummy ache or a leg cramp or, you know, there's germs going around in school or somebody's got a boo-boo or whatever it may be, someone can't fall asleep. Um, and there's not always a lot you can do for kids. Like, I would just take a bunch of supplements maybe or, you know, do something that my child probably wouldn't. And so having essential oils is great because you can apply it topically or diffuse it or use it in some way that's just really simple and that your child will benefit from without all the hassle of, like, here, take this vitamin or here, take this concoction, you know, sometimes that becomes a battle, whereas the oils are just very easy. And my kids will actually come to me and ask for something. <laughs> and I kind of got started with my, uh, my he's now nine, but he kind of fell in love with herbs a, a couple years ago, uh, visiting an herb garden. And he clung to uh, lemon balm. He just fell in love with lemon balm. Of course, he liked a whole bunch of others. And he was having trouble sleeping at the time, and I, I you know, I got him, like, a, a sleep pillow, and we put the essential oil on the pillow for him, and I even, like, let him hold the sprigs of lemon balm, and, like, for some reason, that's all he needed. I think it was wow. partly placebo effect in a way, like, just the thought of, you know, he has his little not magic potion, but you know what I'm saying. And it was just very useful and it was simple, right? All I had to do was, you know, give him a little something, you know. So, and ever since then I realized, wow, okay, there's so many ways I can use this. And so whenever I get a new oil, I'll introduce it to the kids and, and see what their response is. I just let them sniff it right out of the bottle. And it's so fun to watch how they each respond. <laughs> one child who I'm struggling to get him to take his supplements and do much healthy. He's a preteen, and it's like, oh, my word, it's it's a struggle, but <laughs> loves the oils. And I feel like, okay, this is one in I have with this child to help support his health is to, you know, let him use these. So I feel like as a mom, and my kids are a little older, so I'm not, I don't have to be quite as cautious as maybe someone with a baby as far as, the, you know, how to apply it, you know. Um, so it's a little different for me versus moms with babies or young children, toddlers, whatever. And I know that most people have no clue how to use these for their kids. So I would love to hear more from you, Mary. And I know we all have some resources, too, for people as well. But it would be great if we could just kind of talk about getting moms started with oils for their kids and how to kind of use them for that, the kids. Yeah, sure. 
So um, essential oils, what's so wonderful about them is that they're very powerful and they can be such a wonderful immune support or whatever you're looking for, but they're also emotional support at the same time. So it really kind of is a multifaceted form of healing. But uh, for, for very small children, um, I just recommend you really are more careful today, but like for children under three months, I don't recommend applying on the child, but just applying on the mommy. And whether she's breastfeeding or not, um, the baby will smell it on the mom. So that's what you can do for the really, really little babies. Um, then over three months, like between three months and two years, you can do a 0.25% dilution, which means you would take four teaspoons of a carrier oil, whether it's olive oil or coconut oil or jojoba oil, um, and you would just add one drop of oil to that. So a little goes a long way. And then I would just like apply it up and down their spine or on the bottom of their feet or on their belly or anything like that. So that's for the children under two. Children between two and six, I would just do a 1% dilution, which is like taking a teaspoon of the olive oil or the carrier oil and one drop of the essential oil. And you can do the same thing. You can um, just apply it to those places or wherever you want to. Um, and then for kids over six, I feel um, pretty um, open as far as you know how sensitive your child is, like sensitivity will come into play here. Um, but for the average healthy child, I would still dilute it, but it's not like, for me personally, I don't feel like it's something that I get super stressed about. Um, there are certain oils that are better for kids and certain oils that aren't, like peppermint. I don't know if anyone's ever smelled a really good, strong peppermint, but it's strong. Like, it will make your eyes water if it's anywhere close to your eyes kind of thing. And, um, like, that's kind of intense for little baby lungs, and that's something that you shouldn't just use around little kids. So there's certain oils that are better for small children, like frankincense and lavender, and, and some of those are super great. They're gentle. They're perfect for small children. Um, the other thing you have to be careful with adults or kids is that citrus oil, because they come from the rind of the plant or the, the fruit, they're, they're kind of, they attract sunlight. And so if you put citrus oils on your skin, it can it's not a sunburn exactly, but it will just make a dark mark on your skin. Um, and that's not something you want to have happen to your babies. So just be careful with citrus oil on children, especially if they're out in the summertime and they take off their shirt or something like that, and you don't want them to get a little sunburn or anything. Um, so that's just, it's fine as long as it's underneath clothes if you put it, or diffuse it. If you diffuse it or smell it, it can have a really good effect, but it's just not on the skin. So. Any other questions about that? No, I think, that's, I think that was really good tip, too. I'm glad that you brought up the thing about the citrus oils as well, because that was something that I learned the hard way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, yeah, I had made some lotion, and I think I had put some ar orange and tangerine um, oils in it, and I put it on, you know, my arms and everything and my face, and I went out for a walk, and... Um, and I got, you know, it wasn't a horrible, horrible sunburn, but I definitely burned way worse than I would if I hadn't used them. So um, from that point on, and then, I, you know, I figured out after that that the phototoxic reactions that um, people can have with the citrus oil. So, yeah, don't make the same mistake as I did. Be cautious with the citrus oils and, um, and sun exposure. So <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned the peppermint, too, because I, even though I, dil I diluted it, my nine-year-old recently had a headache, and I, so I said, okay, here, let's, let's do a little lavender, teeny bit of peppermint, and I diluted it, and I applied it to, you know, like the nape of his neck, just to keep it away from his face, you know, and he was, like, complaining that it stung, and he did hmm. not like it. So it was peppermint is very it is very intense. Um, so it's kind of cool that you mentioned that because I was thinking you know yep I had experience with that. <laughs> um, so it may be one to just kind of avoid even topically, even if it's diluted. Um, sometimes it's hard to know you know until you try these things. But I'll just share that little story. The maybe. Um, lavender yeah. might have been just enough. You know, lavender could have been fine, you know, and maybe just let him sniff the bottle of peppermint or something would have been 
a better choice. Uh, but now I know. Yeah. Technically, peppermint should be okay for kids over six. So he should have been fine with it. It could be that you just maybe should dilute it more so it's not so yeah. skinny. Because um, it's a really strong one. Um, but I know, like, the back of the neck is much more appropriate than up by the temples because... If you put it by your temples, it's almost guaranteed to sting your eyes. Yeah, even, right. No matter how much you dilute it. So the back of the neck really can feel good. And, you know, for your adults, I don't, I'm not into ingesting oil, but if you take your thumb and just, like, just barely brush it on the top of the bottle and you just get a tiny little bit and you rub that on the roof of your mouth, it just kind of numbs your brain. And it's so amazing. It just feels so good if you have a headache. I mean, so for headaches. Um, and it's not like you're ingesting a huge amount. You're just kind of rubbing it topically on the inside of, of your mouth. But um, that will just feel so good, but it doesn't sting because it's not evaporating up into your eyes. So that's something mm -hmm. you can do for headache, too. Yeah, that's good. I've done it on a, one drop on my toothbrush if I woke up stuffy or something. And I'll just kind of, you know, brush my teeth and it'll really open up the sinuses that way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then you're and then you're just gonna spit out the you know, so it's it's I feel that that's a safer way to use it if you're gonna put it in your mouth and uh, it's pretty effective. Yeah, I do that as well. I love the peppermint on um, just one drop on my toothbrush with my toothpaste and it's just yeah, whoo, it'll open you right up. <laughs> so that's that's a great way. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. I don't. I'm not a big fan of um, of ingesting oils unless you. There are some very specific conditions where you probably should, but you should never do it unless you're working with a trained um, practitioner who understands about using essential oils in that that manner. I, you know, you see a lot of people, um, you know, putting lime and or in orange and lemon oil in their water and just drinking it, drinking it, drinking it. And I really, that really bothers me because I personally know in some of my um, aromatherapy groups that I'm on in Facebook, I mean, I have seen people um, who have talked about their, um, the health problems that they've had, the damage that they've done to their esophagus from, mm -hmm. you know, consuming too many essential oils and, and being unsafe with it. And so you can really do some permanent damage um, and it, it's scary. So, you know, from seeing people's um, experiences in some of those groups and also kind of, you know, I take a very safe, cautious approach. I think that people don't understand how powerful essential oils can be. We think, oh, it's, you know, it comes from a plant, so therefore it's safe. Well, yeah, it is safe, but you have to still be cautious and you still have to know what you're doing. So, you know, definitely don't go crazy with it. And I, it bothers me to see how much misinformation is out there and how many people could potentially be harmed by unsafe uses. So I um, I take a very cautious approach, and I encourage everybody else to be very cautious with it as well. So, Yeah, this week I actually had two clients that were using the lemon drop, uh, the lemon in their morning water every day. And... Uh, I said, yeah, please don't do that. There's actually studies now that are finding it can damage the esophagus and, you know. And both of them actually were like, you know, I'm so glad you told me this because, of course, everyone and their mother is recommending this, you know. Oh, yeah, put a lemon in your water. And and I get the why it would seemingly make sense, but, you know, because lemon in water in the morning and the whole flushing, the liver and blah, blah, blah. But both of these women ha were having some side effects from it, and they made that connection when we talked. And so we do all want to advocate safe usage of oils and make sure we're, you know, understanding that how they work inside the body. You know, we also have to process them through our liver as well, and so we just want to make sure it's not like more is better some people think that same way about supplements, you know, oh, well, I need vitamin D, I'll just take a lot. You know, and it, it's really not a good way to think about it. It's almost you want to, I, I, I hesitate to say use it like medicine, but when it comes to herbs, they have a very powerful effect in the body and you just, you don't need to go hog wild. So we all have newsletters. Jessica has one, I have one. Mary, you have one, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. um, 
we want to be able to give you more a, a place to go if you have questions and you just aren't sure. And um, so we all are going to make sure you get our, our information at the end of this um, in the post. But Mary, do you have anything else to add about um, just safety with oils? Uh, do you happen to know the study I'm talking about with um, As far as the esophagus, I don't. I, I do have something to add, but as far as the ingestion, you know, there's sometimes it's got nice flavor. So if I ingest oils, I'm putting a drop in a recipe of something that's got fat in it. Like I love putting a drop or two of lemon oil in the salad dressing that gives it a really nice citrus flavor, but I'm adding it to like a cup of olive oil, you know, so it's super diluted right. and you're getting a tiny little bit of it. And it can be really, really delicious for flavor. Um, and there's obviously certain oils that you shouldn't ingest, like, I don't even know, vetiver maybe, I'm not even sure. But the way you can tell is that if it's, if it's an oil that is safe for ingestion, it will have a nutrition label on it. And when you take that oil and you super, super dilute it, that's when it becomes more okay, but it's still you never want to have too much of it because it is so strong. Mm -hmm. But um, does that sound right to you guys as far as all yeah. that goes? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I know some people that use, like, peppermint. They'll use, like, one drop of peppermint oil when they're making, like, brownies or, yes. like, a coconut oil candy or something. And I think, yeah, in those cases, it's definitely fine. I don't do that myself just because I kind of am not there, I guess. Um, or I, who knows if I ever will be. But, um, I guess, but you brought up a really good point. You're adding one single drop to a massive amount of fat. Whereas you see a lot of people recommending like the lemon oil in your water. Well, you have to remember oil and water do not mix. <laughs> so that's, you know, it, they may be adding two or three or four drops in an eight ounce cup of water. That's where you start to get into some serious problems. So yeah, I think um, I'm glad that you kind of brought up that little preface. And it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable ingesting oils, um, and I'm not now really the only ingestion I do is the peppermint oil on my toothbrush. Um, so I'm not to that point. So you don't don't feel obligated that you have to ingest them just because you see other people doing it. Go with what you're comfortable with. Um, and if you do make the choice to ingest them, be very safe. Like Mary was saying, you know, you need to it needs to be very very highly diluted with a fat. So. Yeah. Right. And there's actually one other thing I wanted to say, if that's okay. Um, yeah, sure. And it, I kind of I was talking about safety with kids. And it doesn't mean that when your kid turns six, you can just go hog wild. Um, you still need to dilute it more than for an adult. So, but that's when I just don't worry as much. But you know your child, and if they're on the large side or the small side as far as body weight. Uh, but I would go like a two percent for your six-year-old and up for a bit until they start becoming more adult size. So I just wanted to add that in. I I kind of stopped at six, and I should have kept on going a little bit longer. So. Yeah, and I think too it's good to introduce people to oils slowly. So, you know, I mean, I've done that with my kids. I, I, I didn't just get a whole bunch and start using a whole bunch every day. You know, uh, I kind of wanted them to, you know, get used to them and see how they respond to them, you know. So it's it's the same thing I tell my clients with their supplements, you know. Go really slow. Give your body a chance to show you how it's tolerating, you know, this new addition so it's good yeah. to think in those ways because slower is always safer and better, you know. And um, so that's that's kind of another little thought there. So, yeah, Mary, this has been really helpful. Thanks so much for, for joining us today. I think um, we probably have some information, Jessica, to share about uh, how to get more insights into our oil world. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank um, you for having me. Yeah, we've enjoyed having you. This has been great. I think, um, you know, some, some basic information to kind of help people feel a little bit more empowered. Um, if you're ready to learn more about essential oils, you can contact any one of us. Um, this podcast is going to be on all three of our sites. Um, so you can, you know, contact us. We all have um, essential oil specific newsletters where we're sharing helpful information about you know, how you can implement these oils into your daily life, just, you know, easy tips and tricks and recipes and safety information. 
um, and stuff like that. So I would encourage you if you're looking forward to, or looking to um, expand your knowledge on essential oils and kind of implement them into your life, then you know, sign up for our newsletters and get some, some great information um, in there. And then um, we'll also have information kind of in our blog post about the brands of essential oils that we personally like. Um, it really comes down to, you know, find a brand of essential oils that resonates with you. There's a lot of really great brands and there's a lot of really not so great brands out there. So, you know, you really have to kind of do your research and um, all three of us are happy to talk about the brands that we, you know, like and the ones that, um, that really have resonated with us. It's really kind of a personal decision. But if you have questions about brands, um, application, safety, any of that, feel free to leave a comment on the blog post or you guys can all email us through our site, join our newsletters, ask questions on social media. We are happy to discuss oils and help you uh, feel more empowered when it comes to using them as part of your, your healing journey and as your overall health. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're, we're all happy to help you. So I think... Um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. This is kind of a good point to, um, to wrap up, but uh, because we all love essential oils so much, we'll probably be talking about essential oils more in future podcasts, so this is definitely not the end of that. Um, so <laughs> you guys want to add anything in before we sign off for the day? No, but thank you so much for having me, and it was wonderful. Yeah, I, I could happily keep talking about this uh, all day. It's uh, <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, yeah, we definitely ho will talk about oils more in the future. But please take us up on our on our you know following through and and checking out our newsletters. I have a lot of fun writing my newsletters and sharing about oils. Uh, so I would love for you to read them and learn from them too. Okay, well, we are going to sign off. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Vibrant Health Podcast, and we will talk to you guys again next week. Have a great day, everyone.